Tonight's episode is brought to you by the Be Real Podcast Network. For more episodes like this, go to BREELnetwork.com. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Movie Guys Podcast. I am Jordan, along here with Eric and Ed. And tonight, we're going to have a special episode for you guys. It's our new show structure for once in a while we do something like this, and it's called Double Header, where two of the hosts have seen a movie, different movie, and they try to convince the other host to go see that movie. I have forever have seen Dark Tower, and Eric has seen Detroit. Detroit. And Ed has seen neither. So in this episode, we're going to try to convince him which movie he's going to end up go and see. So Eric and Ed, how the hell have you guys been for the past week? You guys are doing good. It's been rough. <laughs> yeah, I uh, you know I will say this, Eric, that uh, you're a little bit behind already because I'm sitting here watching. The Pirates and Tigers, and Justin Verlander basically had a no a no hitter through five and two thirds. Going. Yeah, he had five and through five and two thirds. And as a half Pirate fan, half in, uh, Cleveland Indians fan, I'm a little bit hurt by that. So you are already having an uphill battle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Be- Tigers this season happen. No, and Verlander's way down. I, uh, it's this is a rebuild. We're doing we're doing a rebuild yeah. here, boys. Yeah, yeah. So, trade them all, sell them all. Let's, let's go get the money. Let's get mm. it going. Uh, yeah. No, no, it's not movie related. But you know what? Like, have the Tigers? Oh wait, they've been in a movie before, haven't they? The, the Indians have been in the greatest uh, baseball movies of all time. The yeah. Major League franchise. Yeah, that's been amazing. I'm you know, to the, oh, uh, the other, than, other than other than Bull Durham, I, I'll give Bull Durham. Yeah. Um, that one, yeah, but that's a that's a period piece. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know. I mean, there's nothing focusing around it. I get that. Yeah, right. Shit. I mean, the Rockford Peaches were a better team. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the Durham Bulls, Bull Durham. It's yeah. a great baseball movie. So the reason why, uh, everybody, that we had decided to do this kind of episode is because sometimes to give all you fans a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, what goes on to create Movie Guys podcast is, uh, of course, myself and Eric and Ed, we have a Facebook Messenger feed, and we all talk to each other on this on a daily basis about everything that we need to talk about. Every once in a while, Jordan sends dick pics. It's just uncomfortable. They're testicle pics. Get it right. <laughs> Second of all. <laughs> well, I couldn't gross. tell. It looked like, it looked like a button on a fur coat. That's <laughs> <gross>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Did you sit in gum? What is <laughs> I just want to... I just want to play with it. Okay. Uh, anyway. Okay, yeah. moving on. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so um, I uh, what I do is every month I always send the guys the schedule about this is the movies that we're going to view every week that are coming out, you know, and uh, what have you. But uh, we had a hard time this week because we had Detroit coming out and Dark Tower. Eric, of course, uh, wants to see Detroit not only because he's in Detroit, but because it's a badass movie and I'm going to give him that. Because I did go check out Detroit just to prepare myself a little bit for this. So I seen, the, really? I seen them both. I saw them both. All right. But I am a hardcore Stephen King fan just as much as a hardcore Alien fan. So I had to go see Dark Tower. And uh, we just could not agree. And Ed, Ed was like, you know what? Fuck both of you. I didn't watch them. You know, suckers there. Yeah, well, uh, I we I also have you know other obligations, and uh, you know so I couldn't see two movies, and you know they both seem very interesting, and honestly I just couldn't decide, um, you know so you know I'm glad we actually decided on a format like this because I want you guys to convince me, one of you to convince me to go spend my hard earned money to go pick a movie because normally we have one a week and then we can it's normally a consensus but you know a week like this where you have such a huge following in like Stephen King stories you know you want to see them because you love the stories and you you think maybe it's going to be a decent flick and there seems like a couple of good actors in it but then you have a movie like Detroit that piques your interest because it just looks like a badass gangsta film you know what i mean and it's just like <laughs> It's yeah, like, I mean, I, okay, I, I said that. I, I didn't mean it to sound like that, but you know where I, yeah, 
but you know, it, I apologize. My, you know, my bad. But like, I what I meant was, it just seemed like a badass, gritty sort Apparently of shoot 'em up kind of flick. Gun movie. I get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also, it also piqued my interest, and I wanted to see it, and I couldn't decide. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you guys can can make my mind up for me. Well, hopefully, I will win this one. I, I, I already know that I'm not going to because Ed is biased and loves Eric more. But I digress. Hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but uh, also, fans, we're doing something completely new. And this is the last thing that we're changing on everybody. This will be really fun for us. We're going to give you guys a more simple rating system. We have loved our rating system. We've done a rating system for over a year. But we're going to do something completely different now. We're going to do a simple 50-50, which is, is it worth to see the movie? Or is it not worth to see the movie? So it'll be a simple, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Because really, who cares about how much money you spend? It's your time and energy. Is it worth it? So we'll be yeah. doing that as well, guys, podcast show. But uh, before we continue, if, if you guys are listening to this episode and you have not listened to our sub-sister show, which is Movie Guys Podcast presents Game of Thrones, it is a spoil spoiler-filled show all about the recent game of thrones episode reaction, hosted reaction by, episodes reaction episode hosted by eric and ed mm-hmm. uh, of course uh, eric had some uh, had some uh, uh, personal issues last week so ed got a chance to have uh, adam right. from party distraction Blair and enough. also uh alice i think her name was right allison yeah we allison. uh which you know for yeah for everybody that hasn't yet checked us out if you like game of thrones or not you know, it's it's really unique in the sense that a lot of other shows take a couple of days, do some research, and figure out what they want to say. What we do is the episode ends at 10 p.m., roughly Eastern, every single Sunday. And at 10.01, Eric and I are on the, the chat with each other, and we're talking about and reacting to the show. And from our knowledge of, you know, just watching the shows... And the knowledge that we, you know, go from some background, and I, and, and there is some YouTube video watching going on because I didn't read the books, but, you know, there's it's just a reaction episode, and we absolutely have a good time. We watch the episode, we get drunk, and we just talk about Game of Thrones the minute after it happens. So all our emotions are raw, all our thoughts are raw, and we do apologize for any spoilers for anybody that hasn't listened. Uh, but we try to get the episode up as soon as possible. There's just uh, sometimes we can't get quite get them up uh, for a, you know a day or so, but we try to get them out there as soon as possible. So definitely check those out. So Ed, since you need to have Eric and I convince you, either Dark Tower or Detroit. Who do you want to have go first to plead their case? Their opening statement will you have for their case of their movie? Well, uh, you know, we can call it a uh, a plaintiff and defense kind of system here because I actually going into the concept of which one I wanted to see. Uh, I my first choice was Dark Tower. Uh, of everything that I've read, you know, everything that I know about the storylines. I wanted to see Dark Tower. So, you know, of the two, Eric, I'd like to see you go first because I want you to plead your case. All right. All right. right. So, uh, a few good things about this. So, I am a native of the area. Uh, Not Detroit proper, but uh, obviously northern suburbs, everybody. But still, the spirit of Detroit lives on many miles of uh and all also surrounding areas i i just the the history the everything about detroit i, I love it so I, I know very much of the time about the riots 1967 about what's going on here uh Catherine bigelow directed this movie uh she did uh, obviously a lot of she's kept me award winner right actually uh, hurt locker mm-hmm. right? i believe so zero dark 30 mm-hmm. uh, this is james cameron's ex-wife yeah so uh she's she's Good at what she do what she does there. We got a strong cast with uh, John Boyega, and uh, it, it's a very. Uh, I mean, well, obviously it's a it's a piece of history. This isn't Black history. This isn't Detroit history. This is a American history, uh, and it's about one of the ugliest times of that time where uh, racial tensions were high across the nation, and a lot of cities were tending to break out into riot. And it was just a matter of time because there was a lot of just bigotry that was going on with the starting police stations, with obviously with government too. So 
67 is just a, this is all quickly uh, in the first like five minutes they, they kind of give you this little quick catch up that there's racial tensions and I believe this completely because I've seen many documentaries about this after like that whole southern slave thing kind of happened a lot of people migrated north in hopes for a better life, and because the auto industry, manufacturing industry was in the Rust Belt, they all thought, we're going to move up there and get a better life. But it was actually just more modern-day slavery. It sucks to say that, but that's actually just what it was. So, that being said, um, that's where it picks up. Racial tension. It picks up at the Blind Pig, uh, where the police raid happened in the party. Yeah. And they take everybody out, and shit gets real. Yeah, I, it, I, does. it does. It gets it gets real hard, and then uh, I mean, just just so much happens in this. It's a real story about one incident in particular at a motel called the Algiers Motel, and yeah. uh, in that, which was predominantly, uh, I guess, African American tenant or, or guests that were there. Uh, okay. They uh, well. During a lockdown of the National Guard after they came in and locked everything down, um, they were locked at this hotel and they started to play around. And Well, the incident is about what happened at this hotel that left three young men dead without really much of explanation for a few. Um, and a bunch the witnesses, they were just like, these guys fucked us up, and how the police just kind of got away with it. That's the story. Nice. Yep. Oh, and, wow. Well, again, racial tensions were real, real hard, and Detroit at this time, people don't understand. Like, it, this was one of the worst riots in American history. Like, seventy-nine people dead, that were accounted for. So it shows the starts of the streets of, of a trigger ha happy cop, uh, um, and just how there was rioting and looting that was that was just going on in, in the city, and just how ugly it was. It turned out to be a war zone. I mean, like the National Guard was called in, the army was called in at one point too. So you had three, like the police, National Guard, and Army, all at the same time trying to control these riots and how out of control it can get because you have three people trying to call shots here. Three, and it's just how messy of a fucking uh, thing Detroit was. How the cells in the, in the, the prisons or in, in holding uh, were just filled, like to capacity, like sardines, just thrown in there, just mash them in there, uh, and how... Um, a great job they depicted of how the booking was so filled that they had people just sitting in the hallways. Nobody could could get through the police stations because they were just taking every black man in, pretty much. They're just like, you, look at you, you're coming in, you're arrested, you're arrested, you're arrested. And all this is real. The reason why you should watch this is because this was a, a big case, the Algiers Motel case. Because the the judge was a very, very known racist bigot. So you can probably guess what happens. But sure. uh, the reason why this was so good, because Captain Bigelow, there were survivors of this incident, of the motel. And Captain Bigelow reached out to the survivors and oh. made, made sure to get details about this. In fact, so much so that the uh, one of the, the girls, uh, Hannah Murray, who plays Julie... Um, one of the uh, the attendees at the at the motel, the real life Julie, um, was on set the entire time during filming, to make oh, wow. sure oh, wow. to make sure that details were there and yeah and, and it's really just a fucked up thing. This is a serious movie, a piece of history. It's uh, uh, a woke movie. It, it's uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it really is. Yeah, no, you right. Yeah, hard, hard fucking mistreatment, and it's just like you can't deny it. it's that. Anyway, it's it's that's what it is, and uh, um, it's again it's, sometimes it's difficult to watch because there are like torture scenes, uh, verbal torture, and some games that are being played, and inter interrogation tactics that are used. I said that this movie was kind of like Stanford Prison Experiment. Uh, mixed in with like um, oh I used another movie and I forgot what it was uh, but it's it, it's kind of a, a, a mix of, of that and where it's the authority beating down on the on the little guy and it was a very real movie so um, I, I I liked this movie 
I like the characters that were in it. I think everyone played their part magnificently. Um, surprise, did not know John Krasinski was in this movie, so I had to spoil that one for you. But he popped out of nowhere, and it was very awkward because in an empty theater almost, well, there was, you know, people around. But when he came up in a very dead quiet theater, I went, oh, like that. And <coughs> I, felt, I felt like people were just like, what the fuck did he just... I know, right? Oh, well, I remember... Uh, you know, I, I remember watching, like, a lot of History Channel stuff and seeing, like, the images of the tanks and, like, the police barricading down, what was it, 12th Street? You know, like, that. those are very powerful images. And it was a really rough time, you know, in the United States back in the 60s. It's, you know, I have a... My, my landlord's dad and I actually have become pretty close because we work together. And he tells me stories. And I live in western Pennsylvania, which... You know, in, in around here, and I hate to use the, the terminology, but there's a there's a ton of hidden racism. And, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, where I live, I grew up, Mercer County, Pennsylvania, there was a there was an A&E special that had the largest it had the largest membership active in the 90s of the Ku Klux Klan in the United States. But nobody thinks about the north, the northern industrial area like being being a racist area. They, everybody stereotypes the South as people having, you know, Confederate flags and, and whatnot. I see just as, and I grew up in the South. Like, I grew up partially in the South, too. I grew up in North Carolina. I grew up in Florida. And you do see some, some, but I see more diesel pickup trucks with an American flag and a Confederate flag hanging out the back of both of them than here than I did anywhere else, you know, when I was a kid, sure. you know, living in, in, in rural North Carolina. So, like, I understand, you know, to say I understand is not the is not the case. I don't understand what it's like, but to hear the horror stories of things that have happened just based upon somebody's, you know, skin color is just absurd to me. And you know, so so that so things like that are very powerful. There was good perspective in this movie at the end because you see what these kids have, what these, uh, the guests at the hotel, like, are going through, uh, and what abuse mm -hmm. these cops, Detroit police, by the way, are the ones doing this, and it's a, it's a yeah. great point, because you see, like, the National Guard come in and be like, well, what are they doing? Okay, whoa, uh, this is, this is police. It's police business, we are out of here. You guys are doing this shit. Mm -hmm. And same with state police, they'd come in and be like, whoa, what are you guys doing? Okay, well, that's you guys, we are out of here. You can leave us we're, state police is not going to be in the paper for this one. Goodbye. We're out of here. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> and you know, I honestly, I perspective. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, no, no. My point. Right. Okay, go, go. Is because uh, the one thing you see after this that really uh, it helped out a lot again for perspective is that one of the survivors, obviously after being horribly abused during this whole this, the, during this long night, um, now he is scarred. Now he's Every time when he sees kind of a, a white authoritarian figure, he hates that person, or he doesn't like him, or or he shies away from it, or is there's just that part, and so it's adding to it. You know, it's um, it's it's a horrible cycle. You know, to to take well, away someone's freedom. Yeah, I mean, I, and I and I, I will say this: I'm not I'm not I'm not near as woke as I should be. You know, just to be honest. And, you know, and it's any type of opportunity that I have to sort of experience different cultures like that, you know, is, is I would, you know, so I, I would say it's something that I would, I'd, I'd love to take a part in and see in the movie. Um, you know, like, just, just to be honest, you know, I mean, hearing stories about my family growing up, you know, I grew up, I grew up in an Italian family and my grandpa told stories of, you know, the, the old mob, the old mafia guys would knock on your door and say, hey, listen, I'm fucking your wife tonight, whether you like it or not. Ooh. And yeah, and you know, he, you know, so it was a, basically if you, if you either were or you weren't back then, and those who weren't were terrorized by those who were, in that, in you know, in the Italian community. And coming to this country, a lot of Italian Americans, and I'm not trying to compare them. I don't. I'm not trying to. I'm just telling you my own personal experiences from that. And, you know, you know, you've seen a lot of signs like Italians need not apply and they wouldn't let them come to their own churches. So they built their own churches and then they started their own construction companies and whatnot. So th that's that's my small minor knowledge of, of what it's like to be somewhat 
bigoted against, but it's not near it, it's not near what the African American community was. So I want to know really not firsthand. I want to I want to be woke. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why you know so far your your you know your explanation of this movie really gives a firsthand knowledge of things that you know I so, you know I I want to now I want to see the movie now based upon you know Jordan you're gonna have your fair shot but like he did a great job of explaining this movie man like so I I gotta it's just a personal level like I want to know wh- how we can as a as a society become better in these things well, it's gonna be hard and to how we, after some yeah something like that yeah I I, I want to see it only because. You know the 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 greatest phrase about history ever was those who don't do do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. So I don't want that shit to happen. And you know, based upon the, sort of the the culture in the United States right now, it's it's coming back to a head. It's coming close again. And you know, we need to sort of figure out what we can do to not get get there again. And maybe a movie like this can sort of see you know if you can see it, well, you can sort of you know maybe this is a maybe no fifty year anniversary I think. That's this movie? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think if we get maybe, you know, more attention brought to it, that would, uh, I think that was the subtitle, I think, for this movie, Detroit. It's, it's Time People Know. Or, uh, really? Yeah, I think that's what it is. And, um, I mean, what a better story than, than one that's driven just sheer by, surely by racism. Like, that's, mm-hmm. there's, I mean, other movies may have, you know, oh, well, you're from this country. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, you know, this religion, I'm that religion, I just say country, but, you know, like from medieval times or something like that, too. But this one's just like, they're doing it just out of, you know, just blatant hate for each other. Yeah. It's, or for one for mm. the other, I should say. Mm. Well, l- let's, 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 let's slip into the other movie because it's getting a little serious, you know, for, for, for a movie podcast, you know. And I, and I'll be honest with you, Eric. I mean, you've done a great job of convincing me. Jordan. You know, I, I was on your side to begin with because I thought the, the movie itself, I, I didn't know what, what Detroit was about. We we try to make it a point to not know too much about the movies we're going into. You know, uh, that was that was that was round one. And he I think uh, I think Eric put you on the ground twice. So you need to uh, you need to step your game up, buddy. What's uh, so convince me. Tell me yeah, why. Convince me too. Yeah, tell me. Tell me why Dark Tower is uh, I should see it over Detroit. Well, first of all, Eric, your description is adorable, cute. I remember my first beer. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Second, second of all, can I compete against uh, American history? No. I'm not going to be able to convince you to go see a movie that is written by a cocaine heroin addict, alcoholic, compared to uh, a movie about American history. However, though, it is about one of the worst cities in the United States. And compared to the greatest novelist of all time. So, anywho, uh, Dark Tower is not by far, no means, the best movie in the world. It's by far not the best movie that we are ever going to see in Movie Guys podcast history. It is probably one of the worst stories ever told in this movie. However, though, the difference between Dark Tower and between Detroit is that you have an African-American male who is the lead star with no racism. That's the big difference, first of all, right? You have, okay. an, you have an African-American who is the main star who was a gunslinger. So what a gunslinger is, is a gunslinger is these badass guys who can never miss, uh, that are just the baddest hombres on the planet, essentially. However, though, it's other dimensions. What's really cool, too, about this is that the Dark Tower has the main bad guy as, you know, uh, you know, the man in black, which is also, some people would argue, the main villain in The Stand. And also people would argue, too, that he's also Pennywise from It. Okay. So you so you okay. got some world building here. Uh, and, Ed, I know that you like Stephen King, probably not as much as I do. But, my God, this is the prettiest Stephen King film you'll ever see. Uh, we'll see what happens when it comes out in a few weeks. I don't know the so the is- Langolier the Langoliers was pretty was pretty beautiful. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Hey, listen, wasn't. you had giant space. You had sky eating Pac Men. Yeah, I understand. In the Langoliers, they were eating I understand. time. Or... Yeah, they, so, they were they were eating time and 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 the world. Yeah, go ahead, Jordan. I'm sorry. No, no, but it's interesting because the guy um, who plays the gunslinger, I can never say his name right, uh, the African-American, uh, he's, he's not African-American, 
Thank you. Uh, he's uh, Daniel Craig has officially signed on to do one more Bond film, but this guy is supposed to be taking over the reins in the Nolan remakes of Bond. I was at a wait, not, wait, not, wait! Yeah. Pause, pause! Time out! Time out! Time out! Did you really just tell me that Chris Nolan is redoing Bond? Well, he's not technically redoing Bond. He's continuing the story after Daniel. Craig. Mother, fucker! God damn it! Continue. You, you just ruined uh, my totally night. How much <laughs> and Idris so, Elba isn't yeah, African yeah. American. He's just he's just good looking. He's, he's just, just African. Good. No, no, he's just he's, African. No, he's from the UK, isn't he? Yeah, but oh, he's, is he? He's yeah. Fucking yeah, he's from the UK. Gorgeous, man. That guy's... Oh, I got but, a man crush on but, him. But wow. the difference between Detroit and Dark Tower is that... Hold you tight. Not hold you tight. Talk to you. Hold he used to be a you. DJ, too, so he can spin yeah. me right around. <laughs> oh, nice 80s record. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I just... Look, at, at the end of the day, what are you in the mood for? And it's, are you in a mood to go see a movie that is real, that, oh, my God, this has happened, uh, like a Selma, or, of course, this movie, Detroit? Or, or do you want to go into a sci-fi fantasy world with a boy and his dog, essentially, and going across evil, just, just, just trying to stop evil? Because what the Dark Tower is, if the Dark Tower falls, then all the dimensions collide and the man in black take over everything. Do you really want Matthew McConaughey being the leader of everything? I don't. All know. right, all right, all right. I guess we should say that if it was worth it or not. I mean, I, I guess mm -hmm. that part. I mean, I said the chart is worth it, but I just just to add on to Jordan's point, yeah, you do need to be in the kind of mood for it. This ain't this ain't a comedy here, so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look again though. Uh, Eric, you had some very good points. You had a very good argument. Uh, my argument is just simply this. It's, it's a Stephen King movie, so you know what you're going to get. Uh, it was a fun time. It was not a great movie. Does it deserve the 19% of Rotten Tomatoes? No, fellas. It does not deserve a 19% of Rotten Tomatoes. That's bullshit. Uh, hell, I just saw the Emoji movie yesterday, and that does not deserve 7%. It's not good. It's terrible. But it's better than seven percent. I've seen worse. We've reviewed worse. So no, you're tearing not. me apart, Lisa. So <laughs> the room, uh, by I'm the making way, making that into Seth Green and all that. Making into a movie. All right, we're, we're digressing. That's not yeah. my fault. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that's my closing argument. Is do you want to go and see a movie that's a Stephen King movie where you got good versus evil and? A boy in trouble, kind of like an E.T. kind of thing. And, and is he going to make it? Is he not going to make it? And great special effects and beautiful cinematography. Or do you want to see a movie that is good all the way around, like Detroit, but it, you leave there wanting to go home and turn your bathroom into another 13 reasons? I don't want to do that. <laughs> also, also, to make a point here uh, that will probably help, help the decision, The Dark Tower is one hour, 35 minutes. Detroit yes. is two hour twenty three minutes. Yes. So, Jordan, let me ask you. And it feels like two hours. Yeah. Do they put all what twelve books into an hour and a half? So, first of all, there's not twelve books. There's seven books. There's and, seven books. And yes and no. Some people have argued that this is the eighth book. Some people have argued that they do the greatest hits of all seven books. I'm leaning towards more of that side where they do the greatest hits um, because the gunslinger uh, is not a major character until, and I'm going to be completely fucking destroyed on this. So I apologize, but I believe the gunslinger doesn't even come in until the fucking second book. So, uh, you know, um, they do cherry pick. You know what this is? Dark tower is, and this is a bad comparison, but Gavin, give me an idea. It is the Friday the 13th remake in 09, where they took the greatest hits of the first four Friday the 13th and made a movie out of it. All right. That's, okay. kind, of, that's, that, that's kind of what Dark Tower is. That's they thing. took the greatest yeah. hits. Okay, so, you know, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Like, you know, both of you, you know, it depends what you're, you know, what you're in the mood for. It depends sort of where you're, you know, where you're leaning. You know, I, I do have to say this, though. Like, something like, you know, Stephen King's writings, other than a couple of books – or excuse me, a couple of movies. Like his books have not translated well into in the film. What are you talking? And about? you know, like I mean, you got it, 
and you've got, you know, like, that really and truly, you know, I mean, what, uh, fucking Green Mile? Right. Well, well none, of you know his, none of his books have, uh, when, you, when, you, when you say translated well, what happened was, uh, let's just go on an it here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down my nerd boner a little bit. But uh, the director of the original It TV show in the 90s when we were growing up, he, uh, he even admitted he never read the book. And he oh, wished geez. he did. Because, uh, because Pennywise, the clown that we all know, the famous clown, uh, is actually not even really in the novel. I have been reading the novel recently to prepare uh, for, the, uh, for the Stephen King uh, It episode in a few weeks. And what It actually is in the novel... It is actually whatever its victim is afraid of. Period. Like a Bogart. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you know, one kid's afraid of, you know, the mummy from the 30s, and it comes up like that. Uh, uh, Rita Hayworth in The Shawshank Redemption, that short story, barely that movie had anything to do with the short story. So what, what you're seeing with Stephen King's stuff, Ed, to go on your question, is – People take the titles of his books and they kind of spin off and do their own thing. To be quite honest with you, yes, quite honest with you, the only movie that stayed like almost true, like 90% true, would be Cujo. They changed one thing and that was the ending. Other than that, Cujo was pretty faithful. Okay. Because if you guys have never seen Cujo, if you have seen Cujo, uh, you have, you know, the mom and the son and the dog traps and blah, blah, blah. Well, at the end of the book, the son actually dies of dehydration. So the mom's alone. And the movie, she revives the boy. That's the only difference, really. Oh, well, yeah. oh okay. But yeah, but so Stephen King has great works. Uh, and his movies, by and large, are pretty fucking solid. I mean, come on, guys. See, The Shining, fellas. Do I need to continue? The Shining. Yeah. Well, that. No, I mean, I'm. That's different. That's different. The, I know it's different. Damn it! But I'm trying to win. Fuck off. That the <laughs> Shining is completely different. That Cooper one is different. So they redid it for the TV one. So you can you can put that one in your pipe and smoke it, or I'll smoke it for you. Yes, but it's still classified as a Stephen King movie. So. No, yeah. no, no. That one's a Stanley Kubrick movie. Yeah, I mean, when you when you think of like when you're talking about Stanley Kubrick movies versus Stephen King movies, you don't like. I didn't even think until you just reminded me that The Shining was a Stephen King book. Not that I knew that it wasn't, but I don't even think about it. I yeah. thought of it as a Stanley Kubrick movie, and you know, I mean, the like, you know, you you do have some movies that like you can get anything Hallmark Channel. You know, most of the most of Stephen King's movies are Hallmark Channel quality films. Like, you get a few, like, there are a few great ones, but of the non-top tier, okay, and I'll include The Shining because it is technically, you know, a Stephen King story, you know, uh, everything below that top tier, uh, you know, Green Mile, It, it, you know, like, then they're all just bad. There's not even, like, a second tier that can qualify because, uh, for, other than for the basement, like, I made a comment about the Langoliers. That story is an awesome story, and it translates really well in your own imagination. But then you see the dude from, you know, then you see the fucking dude from the Green Mile, the big guy, not, not John Coffey. Uh, Michael but he, Clark Duncan. Not him. I'm talking about the big white boy who played the, the, the nice prison guard, other than oh, Tom Hanks, in the Green Mile, was the pilot in the Langoliers. And, like, the Langoliers, the movie itself... You watch it, it's just like, this is a terrible fucking movie. It's really, like, basically, if Stephen King writes a book, they just hire the most rookie of screenwriters to to write a script and the most rookie of directors to, to put to the movie because they know people are going to go see it because it says Stephen King's you know, on it. So, you know, I will say this. I'm glad that there's at least some level. Like you mentioned cinematography. You mentioned, you know, there's some pretty decent acting. And then, like, Matthew McConaughey, for all his quirks, and he's been in some bad movies, the stuff he's good in, he's incredible. Uh, Dallas Buyers Club, he was great. Um, what was it? True Detective, incredible. Uh, Mud, he's awesome in Mud. Uh, you know, and that's a very underrated movie, Mud. So, 
you know, you do have some top level actors, at least uh, billing in this movie. So, you know, you at least have some some sort of credibility. But I, I will say this, Jordan. I mean, in terms of this particular conversation, you know, you got to show me some passion, brother. You you've seen both. Like, you got to tell me why, of the two, I should see one versus the other. Because right now. You know, Eric's story, Eric's story about the movie, not just the, the movie itself, he's convincing me more, man. You gotta, you gotta step your game up, brother. All right, fine. It's as simple as this, and I've talked way too much. It, it, it is, it is simply this. It is based off of your mood. Eric, Eric had an amazing opening argument, but my argument is always this: Do you want to go in the theater with a bucket of popcorn, or do you want to go in the theater with a box of tissues? I don't want to go in there with a box of tissues. I want to go in there with a box, you know, with, with, with a nice free box of popcorn. Uh, not saying that Detroit's bad. It's good. I enjoyed it. Am I going to buy it a Blu-ray? Probably. I enjoyed the movie. It's Again, a really good movie. I did. I it it felt two and a half hours. It was a long. Time. Yeah, it felt long, but I want to be entertained. I mean, my life and a, on a on a personal note, my life's not awesome outside of movie guys podcast you know everybody goes through ups and downs all of us do so i don't want to go to a movie and feel worse than what i did when i walked in yeah you know, right uh, now. that's a good point uh but that's just my point uh, but you as an individual have to choose on that you know like what mood do i want to see they're uh but my last Little paragraph, Detroit is a better movie than Dark Tower. Absolutely. Better directed, better acted, better everything across the board. It's a better movie than Dark Tower. It's very, it's very raw. Very yes. Raw. Well, but, uh, off, of, off of that point, what would you both say? And, you know, Jordan, you sort of started with it. So, Eric, I want you to start this segment. Segment. What would you say were the downsides Downsides of each movie? Like, what, what made it feel, as you said, you, you felt every minute of the two and a half hours? For Detroit, and you know, Jordan, what would you say were some of the, the you know, the, the reasons maybe why you know you didn't necessarily a hundred percent feel it was the better directed or acted of the two? Well, uh, because because they try to do the greatest hits. You don't you don't make the Dark Tower, and call it the Dark Tower, and then just do the greatest hits and the, and then just the one movie. You don't do that. You do the first book or maybe the second book combined in the one movie. And that's it. So for people who are not uh, either a, a fan of Stephen King, for people who have seen Stephen King movies but never read Stephen King's books, uh, this was a bad movie to get on. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you haven't seen Stephen King's movies but you read his books, you wouldn't like it, and vice versa. If you never read his books and you've seen all of his movies, you'd be like, dude, like, it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't want to make you go and read the books. I've read okay. the books, but... That's my issue. It's this, and how dare I can you know compare the movie to the book because they're always fucking different. However, though, the Dark Tower is considered to be like, besides the Stand, like S Stephen King's like you know baby. You know what I mean? Because he made seven of them. He's never done that with any other of his novels. Okay. And they just kind of just fucked it up. Really, they just kind of fucked it up. All right, Eric. What would you say? You know, are some of the downsides of Detroit? Um, there was maybe a few things that, uh, maybe they could have cut out. Um, I felt like, uh, there was, some, there was a lot of cool things, like they used real footage. So they actually used okay. the actual millimeter footage, uh, or, uh, 30 fucking footage or home reels of like, of a lot of the riots and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. Um, again, it was just. Really, it was uh, it was really it was longer than it needed to be, and um, but I mean it, it's just it's fucking rough, man. Because there's a lot of details that in that part in the in the in the hotel or in the motel when they're actually doing that, there's a lot of detail you don't want to leave out on, and the after effect was a lot of it too. Um, I mean, what would I fucking leave out? It's 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 rough. I don't know. It, it just it's like one of those where. It's just long. Like, I know it's going to be a long ride, but I, I kind of okay. went through it anyway. It, there was a lot of uncomfortable moments just because of what they did, you know? And the only, I, I very much compare it to the Stanford Prison Experiment because you, in your head, you know going into it that this is real. But they had said after that there, a, lot of the, a lot of the stuff was uh, over-embellished or it was kind of, you know, filled in. They, they filled in a lot of blanks. They, they did the best that they could is what they were trying to say. 
you know. Okay. Um, maybe they could have highlighted on a, on a few other things uh, without it being so much, um, it being just about the Detroit police because they didn't mention anything about the army coming in to break things up, and they didn't mention anything about how they would uh, um, uh, have to organize sectors. So the, the Detroit police had this neighborhood, had control of these five neighborhoods. The National Guard had control of these five neighborhoods, and the Army had control of these eight neighborhoods. They didn't mention the, you know, uh, so that was historically a little bit inaccurate. So there's maybe a few things there. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I mean, as far as anything goes, I mean, it, it, the story's pivotal, and everything it seemed to be very necessary, and it gave you real pictures and real updates from the characters after the movie, you know, because, again, these are real characters. Um, oh, here, here's an interesting fact um, that I think they, they could have been lost in the message, too. John Boyega's character, um, Dismooks, or whatever his name is, um, who played the security guard who just kind of happened to be there and was criticized in his life for being an Uncle Tom. At the end of the movie, uh, they had said that he had gotten a lot of death threats. And what they failed to leave out is that those death threats were from the Black Panthers. Okay. So, like, I felt that would have been negative towards the message they were trying to give. I get that. But that's a pretty big detail, is that the death threats that he had gotten were from African-American communities. Uh, for him being an Uncle Tom, because he was on trial with the rest of the police officers, too. Mm. Dude, it's like... Um, Again, it's, it's just one of those, that's, I think the only bad thing about this movie, because everything else was just really well acted, it was just long, man. Like, there were parts where, yeah, I remember, I'm just like adjusting in my chair, you know, and I feel like if I were to be watching this at home, I would probably have to do it in two parts. Jordan, help me out, would there be anything in this movie that, uh, um, besides, I guess, the time that you would feel was unnecessary or that needed to be removed or that you just didn't, you just didn't like well, you know, this may be uh, totally unpopular, but it's John Boyega right now. Um, that's not the only issue I have with the movie, but right now I think that everybody kind of likes him because, you know, Finn from Star Wars. Sure. Um, he has two more movies on that. Um, I didn't really see him act much or act that well in Force Awakens. Um, this was better than his performance in Force Awakens, but I don't see the it factor yet. And him as an actor. So I can't follow him through any of his journeys that he currently goes through um, as an actor in any of his careers. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure him out right now. Uh, two, it is long. Um, I didn't check the runtime on the movie. It was one of those movies that I should have checked the runtime because I was way late to pick up Riley from the babysitter. Because uh, it was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, because you think a movie like Dark Tower would be like fucking three hours long. Yeah. Know? Uh, so, um, but, um, yeah, definitely, definitely felt the length. Um, the violence overall does not bother me at all. I know it bothers some people that I know that the reason why my wife didn't want to see this movie with me is because she didn't want to see, you know, the white on black, black on white violence. Uh, but it, but it, I'm a firm believer that that stuff needs to be shown. So like Ed said earlier in the episode, uh, so we don't repeat it. Uh, the movie overall though was just strong. My last complaint is I'm just not a fan of the director. Uh, she is James Cameron's ex-wife. Uh, I feel that she's only in the business because of who she was married to. And I don't feel that she has, either know that her movies are Oscar winners. Uh, I don't really feel that she has a very good movie that defines her as a director yet. And I don't think that she has a very good merit as a director. I just think she gets thrown into movies because of who she is. Uh, I'd rather see her do something more small uh, and see where she goes from there. So my issues are John Boyega, uh, the runtime, and definitely, definitely the director. I got to see more of those individuals. My issues. Okay. Okay. okay I mean, I mean, I, I respect. I respect that. I mean, at least you're being honest about it. Really. Yeah, well, that well, that's why we do it. So. Uh, now, here comes the point of the show where everybody who's listening to this right now is chomping at the bit. we got to figure this out. Ed, who won? Eric or me? What movie are you going to go see tonight? 
Is it Detroit well, or is it Dark Tower? Well, as, as I said, I went into this uh, wanting to have seen Dark Tower more. I wish I would have. Uh, you know, the going into the movie, going into this conversation, but based upon everything you've said, based upon my feelings about certain films and, you know, and, and Eric, I just think your argument was better. I mean, I'm picking Detroit. I think Eric, you won, dude. I like, think uh, I think it's just a better, better movie. I, it's, it was a hard watch, but like, yeah, I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay, okay with facts that. around it. You know, it's history. Oh. That's what I think it's hard to compete. If it was a better dark right. tower movie. I'm sure that it was a piece then that would have been, but yeah, no, like, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm okay with hard watches. Uh, you know, I mean, if, for me, if I go into a film knowing what it is, if I, if I know that Detroit's a hard watch and I know that, that Dark Tower is, is like a fun ish kind of watch, you know, it, it doesn't matter what mood I'm in. I can sort of, I can shape myself to, to the, to the film. Sure. So, you know, my number one goal is better movie. You know, what is the better film? What was better acted in? What was better directed? What was better written? Um, you know, and I think you guys both sort of sort of admit that maybe the that uh, that Dark Tower was prettier to watch. And and I'm but so but I'm not worried about easier to watch it, you know, prettier to watch is OK. But in terms of your guys' conversation, your guys' arguments, I think you both sort of agreed that Dark Tower was the better or excuse me, uh, Detroit was the better film of the two. And even though it, it's two and a half hours and it felt like every bit, I think it only felt like that because, you know, the the director and everything did their job. They made it hard to watch on purpose because it wasn't easy. It wasn't it was hard to go through. So why should the movie be easy to watch? True that. You know, it's, those, those are those, those are artists doing their, you know, performing their art. That is, you know, people performing their job to uh, to perfection. So. You know, again, uh, you know, Eric, I think that you're, you know, you're right on point. I, I'd love to, I would, I, I've switched my, my thought and I would go, uh, it has nothing to do with uh, my, my thoughts on either of you. It <laughs> just like, I think Eric won the argument. Fair and, enough. Uh, Anthony Mackie is in this movie. This is his, his, uh, his second Catherine Bigelow movie. Yes. He is in this movie. Do you guys uh, want to know some other Detroit facts uh, that was along with this movie? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. the, the first guy that was killed in this movie, um, if you know what I'm talking about, I, I don't want to say his name for, for spoiler reasons or something like that, but, um, the first guy that was shot in the hotel, uh, upon, uh, actual records, stated statements or something like that, everyone had said, everyone, that he was dead before ev everything happened. So, oh, nobody knows okay, for so certain... He yeah, nobody knows for certain if the police shot him or or who shot him, but the tenants came down, and, or are they, the guests again, and everyone, and they were gathering people up, and uh, uh, they said that he he was dead before it. All, all accounts of it. So we don't know for certain if the police killed him, but he, it, it's very, very possible that he could have been dead before all this, just by coincidence. So there were some definite artist liberties taken. Uh, but again, we don't we we don't know. But out of the she did, okay. Kevin Bigelow did in fact talk to the survivors, uh, a few many of which who still live in uh, or around the city. Uh, Julie Heisel or something like that. So the two girls that were there, um, a lot of people think that they were prostitutes in the hotel. They were actually just there for a concert. And they were supposed to be on their way back. They were just staying at the hotel because it was the cheapest <laughs> motel. <laughs> It was the only one that was available that would uh, during the riots, but they were there during a concert, and so they were not prostitutes. And they, uh, I guess, you know what? No, they were groupies. I guess you could probably say so that they were. They were, uh, as as I mentioned earlier, they were what my grandfather would have called putana diablo. There you go. <laughs> oh. I I love being German. Then I. Uh. Well, we all know you love your wiener schnitzels. You Irish, piece, you Italian piece of crap. Anyway. Italian, Italian. Uh, I praise their attention to detail, as um, a lot of these stuff uh, just seemed to look. Uh, it looked like it was filmed in parts. Oh, it was in hand um, which is by Detroit. But this was the same structure, same building. 
Uh, so yeah, I wish it would have shown a little bit more of the after effect too, because uh, good point. Uh, what really sucks about Twelfth Street is that, um, as you saw in the movie, it was pretty big. Like there was a lot of buildings, there was businesses, there was restaurants, there was stores, there was there's a lot of shit. There's nothing now. It's all demolished. It's all just empty lot, green. Yeah, empty lot. There's nothing. So well, hmm. isn't that a lot of Detroit though? I mean, other than like you've got your main your main downtown levels, like you got your GM building, Comerica Park, you know, uh, you know the the new uh, the new Red Wings and there are and, still uh, bones that are around, but this there are none. They've been completely demolished. It's it's white. It's open. It's open development. Okay. Yeah, which I've seen when I was up in Detroit uh, a month ago. So I mean, it. there's yeah, there's I mean, there's a lot of old structures that still stand, and and though they look condemned, they could still and they are being renovated to be repaired. But nope, uh, for a lot of parts of the riots, they just sort of like no, we got, they've been burnt down to the ground, and they just wiped them all clean. Yeah. Soul brother, well, spray painted everywhere. Because that that well, that meant that um, the store owner was a it was black owned and so don't don't riot don't loot me. That's what that's what that. Meant. It, it, it didn't brother. work. It didn't work. They they didn't still work. they still looted them. So Ed, I'm glad that you have come to a conclusion of what movie you're going to see, and we hope that you enjoy Detroit. And not only do we hope that you that you enjoy Detroit, but we hope everybody enjoyed listening to this conversation. I had a hell of a good time, uh, fans. I had a great time. This is one of the one of my favorite episodes I've ever done with movie guys, uh, and we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode as well. Make sure to check us out though on these other forums. Check us out at movieguyspodcast.com. Check us out on iTunes, which is at movieguyspod, and search us on Facebook, Movie Guys Podcast. And our uh, another source that you can find us all on is on uh, Podbean. Search movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. On iTunes, search Movie Guys Podcast, and if you just Google it, you'll find us. Trust me, I've done it a few times. <laughs> so that's me. <laughs> but anywho, uh, but uh, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode, and we'll make sure to talk to everybody next week for Annabelle Creation. Have a good night.